I want to do a quick video. This is a pretty interesting uh, what happened with the CMA. The CMA, which is from the UK, has provisionally concluded that Microsoft's Activision Blizzard deal will not result in a substantial lessening of competition in the console gaming services. Because Microsoft is unlikely to withhold Call of Duty from PlayStation. And then it goes on to say it down here um, from Tom Warren. The CMA still has concerns around cloud gaming market and the investigation remains on course for completion by the end of April. So you still have that. Basically, all of Sony's complaints, they just said, yeah, no, chucked it out. And that's basically what Brazil and pretty much anyone else who's done any kind of looking into this already and have already decided has come out and said, yeah, I don't see anything wrong here. Now... You got Xbox fanboys. You know how Sony fanboys were ridiculous. And, oh, it's blah, 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 blah. And it's like, wait until it's over. Because you don't know what the hell is going to happen. Um, you know? Like, I would... Like, even with the mergers and acquisition lawyers, like Cole Glaw, saying, yeah, it's X percentage of this, this, and that, and this, and that. And he kept on saying, first he started off, it was like 80-20. Then it was like 75 or 70-30. Um, or 75-30. 25 70 30 something like that and then he had, like when they said when they uh, FTC made the announcement that they're gonna block it I think he dropped it to like 60 40 of it going through so 60 percent 60 percent chance of it going through it was something like that I don't know the exact percentages but he kept on lowering his percentages of it going through even that's I think including the concessions that uh, people were talking about uh, and yeah you just had this whole I don't think anyone knows fully what's going to happen. Although after this, the CMA, which is basically the one that was the strongest against the deal because of the, within, I wouldn't, can't really say within reason because there really is no reason to uh, block it. Uh, because of Sony's complaints, you know, they dropped the, probably the, like they, that Microsoft has overcome, like honestly, I think the biggest hurdle with this deal and that was Sony complaining and now people are thinking at least on Xbox's side or Xbox fanboy side which is you know you know the thing with fanboys they're not logical they don't think they don't they don't make sense the vast majority of the time they just screech and screech and my god is it annoying um and honestly, you can keep screeching because Sony is not going to lose Call of Duty. Microsoft is not going to yank Call of Duty away from Sony in some kind of things like, hey, Jim Ryan, see that Call of Duty? It would be a shame if something were to happen to it, eh? No, they're not going to do that. You know why? Because that'll look bad to the regulators. And you got to understand. This is not Xbox versus Sony and the regulators. This is Microsoft. Microsoft has to do it. Like, like, the, like, if you look at this picture here from Tom Warren, Microsoft, Xbox, Activision, Blizzard, King. One's bigger than the other four. Why is that? Because it's Microsoft, not Xbox being the top dog. And that means that Microsoft is looking out for the company as a whole, not just the video game division. So if they were to, oh, we're going to stick it to Sony. No, because then if Microsoft wanted to buy something that was outside of the video game industry, you know, like five years from now, you know, after they bought all the publishers and developers that they're planning to acquire, you know, to make their Game Pass, uh, you know, reach the billions of gamers that they want to reach, then they're gonna they're gonna have to you know appease the regulators and not back out of the, what they said they were gonna do not say hey yeah look it's unlikely that we'll pull out but yoink yeah they're not gonna do that because the regulators are like yeah you remember when you spent 70 billion dollars on the activision blizzard king and then you said you weren't gonna do something where it was very unlikely and then you just yoink it with like no like all willy-nilly you know to get back at Sony no they're not they're not gonna do that 
that they're going to probably either sign the 10 year deal with Sony, which is, uh, that's assuming Sony wants to sign the deal. And even if they don't sign the deal, as long as Sony doesn't kick them off, they can still leave the, bring their products to there for 10 years. No problem. Even if Sony doesn't sign it, although, um, a lot of people are saying Sony's probably just going to sign the dang document and be, get it done with. Um, you have it with the FTC where some gamer person tried to sue to block the Activism, Activision Blizzard deal. In the actual court system, not the FTC court system, the actual court system, the judges threw it out. That basically is an indication that if the FTC were to bring it to the courts, they're probably going to face a similar, you know, uh, thing. So basically, if, if you're Lena Khan and you want to make yourself look like, you know, at least somewhat competent and not some fanatic who has a grudge against all big tech and will just constantly sue to block all deals just because you can and waste the taxpayers' money for the United States, you're, you're probably going to want to say, hey, yeah, um, just sign the deal with Sony and we're good. We allow it. We allow it to go through. And, and that's pretty much it. You know? That's, and then the European Union, we heard uh, from, I think, Reuters, which has been on top of the ball with the European Union, from what I've understood, that they basically said, yeah, the European Union is likely to pass it. So the CMA is now seems far more likely to pass it than they were. The European Union, if the Reuters is to be believed, is going to more than likely pass it. The FTC um, probably seen that lawsuit from the gamer who tried to sue to block this deal, Activision Blizzard, in an actual courtroom, not the FTC thing, because you got to remember the courtroom is the final say in the matter. And they basically threw the case out, saying you have nothing. And the, what they put in the documents was a lot of the stuff that the FTC was spewing. So from what it looks like, at some point, it looks like all three major body or remaining hurdles are going to end up passing this deal. So they're not going to want to appear to be the bad guy. You, you want to know where it's going to hurt them or where it's going to hurt uh, someone? If Microsoft fulfills their obligation, does the 10 years, and Sony keeps doing their anti-competitive stuff instead of, you know, trying to make themselves, you know, com like allow themselves to complete or compete, you know, invest in not just making these blockbuster games, but, you know, maybe bringing back some of their old games, even if they have smaller teams working on it, like double A uh, studio teams, or maybe just small groups making passionate games like Microsoft is with like games like Pentiment, Hi-Fi Rush. I think Grounded was a small development team. Um, if they don't start doing stuff like that, and they keep doing their anti-competitive stuff, I'm trying to just, you know, block uh it's like here um square enix here's x amount of money don't put your games on xbox or game pass and we're good and you know they keep doing stuff like that and they keep trying to assuming you know sony remains dominant in the dominant uh spot you know they're gonna look bad even if th there's no there's nothing to break them up uh to break up the quote unquote monopoly that sony might have i don't even think they have a monopoly even though they're the top dog but they're the closest to the monopoly at the moment well, one of the closest i think tencent might be more but they're kind of a third party publisher rather than a like a platform holder like xbox nintendo or um what do call it sony with playstation so yeah I think, looking back at it, if this is how it ends up going, it's kind of funny. Sony, prior to this whole Activision Blizzard deal, was looking like the 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 underdog, the the you know the the what do they call it the the white knight for gaming, like the symbol of hope for gaming, and you know a lot of people, you know, over the course of this whole deal, 
just lost more and more faith in Sony. As more dirty laundry kept coming out, as, you know, it's Jim Ryan and Sony, like, I honestly think they were better off just saying, yeah, we'll sign a 10-year deal behind the scenes or, and, you know, come out to some kind of agreement with Microsoft and just kept all that stuff under the rug. You know, like, you do not see this, like, behind the curtains. You, you do not know about this. You do not see this. Because I think their brand and reputation as a platform has suffered tremendously over the past year. Because Jim Ryan had to throw his development teams and, you know, like, developers and all the studios he has making, you know, their first-party games under the bus. Basically saying, We're, our developers are not competent enough to potentially make a Call of Duty competitor. Bullshit. I'm going to say it. You have some of the most talented development uh, teams in the world working for you, Sony. When you said that, I may not have liked your business decisions, but I still had respect for you as a platform to potentially compete with Microsoft. And I was hoping you would compete. Like, like I wanted that competition. I wanted that hardcore competition where one pushes the other higher, higher. So I can get better games. So I can get more unique experiences. So I get to get the better bang for my buck. When I seen that, I lost faith not only in Sony, but I lost respect for Sony as a whole. I'm worried about their future. Because of whoever's in charge making these decisions. I'm not sure if it's Jim Ryan or if someone above him. Because um, you, know, you got to remember... Got shareholders and um, the board of directors, I think, that might be pulling the strings behind the scenes, and Jim Ryan just does what you know he basically has to do. Either way, I lost a lot of faith and respect for Sony, um, because you're basically through your own. That would be like Phil Spencer come out and saying, "Yeah, I don't trust any of our first party studios to make good games." I don't think we could ever compete with Sony. Um, you know, I don't think we could ever, you know, I don't think Bethesda could be make a game that's, um, you know, good enough to compete with, I don't know, God of War. He doesn't do that. Why? Simple. He has respect for his developers, the team, that make... Like I mean, look at some of the games. People point and laugh at Halo. Halo Infinite. The game launched in a good spot. The development team just couldn't keep up with adding content for a live service game. Like honestly, if I th I think if they would have made that live like Halo Infinite just another uh, game and it wasn't a live service game with the expectations of consistent and frequent content, and just say yeah, hey guys, yeah, this is Halo Infinite. We'll occasionally add new content to the game it's not a live service game i honestly think the overall response and feedback to the game would have probably been a lot different and the harsh criticism that they're facing probably wouldn't have been as harsh but they mark it as a like basically a live service game where they're going to continuously add new content have multiple seasons and the multiplayer aspect of the game flopped and failed after i don't know like a month of you know you know issues at launch um, and as time kept on going on and the longer it took to fix them, them canceling the split screen, uh, uh co-op, was it split screen co-op or just co-op in general? I think it was split screen co-op. So yeah, overall, you had other games. You had that Forza Horizon 5 that I think is honestly looks like a pretty good racing game. I didn't get around to playing it. Um, at some point I might because it looks like a good game like because I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of car games I'm not a big fan of racing games but that's one of the few games I could say you know what maybe maybe I'll pick it up because that does not look that bad of a game I honestly like the way it looks so there's that aspect uh, what other games did they release hi-fi rush a lot of people like that game um, Grounded, a lot of people like that game. Sea of Thieves, you know, granted, Sea of Thieves is a bit older. It hasn't been more recently. Um, 
Redfall looks to be good. I hate the fact that, uh, thankfully, they're corrected and changed course. Um, but Redfall had an, uh, an issue where they were going to make the single player online only. Um, and if anybody from Xbox is listening to this, um, I think all of your live service games, or at the very least, the vast majority of them, like Redfall, should have an offline single player version of the game for game preservation sakes. And on top of that, it'll allow for the capacity for mod support, meaning that if someone wanted to make a cool single player mod that you know added new types of content or things to the game, that could end up potentially inspiring the developers if they see some passionate uh, uh, modder make something really amazing for, let's just say Redfall for the single player mode maybe they could end up taking inspiration from what that mod the modder did to the game maybe he did a whole rebalance and changed you know certain things and mechanics and overhauls that could be either iterated in a future redfall update or a redfall 2 sequel or the redfall sequel you know redfall 2 or something so and that includes for if, if the activision blizzard deal goes through i honestly wish i would hope starcraft 2 online stuff like me being able to download all the maps permanently on my computer so i don't have to keep re-downloading them every time i do a match i would like to have the option to potentially download some of the maps permanently um same thing with like some of the arcade mods and you know skirmish mods that i want on there just to keep it on there um i wish diablo 3 would get a single player offline version or just an offline version in general where you know, maybe I could connect to my friends on an offline version. Um, you know, potentially open up mod support. Same thing with Diablo 4 in the future as well. Now, granted, I think Diablo 4 would take a while because of the fact that, you know, it's releasing in June. Your acquisition is probably going to, if it does go through, is probably going to go through around that time period as well. Um, probably would take you a couple years to get that kind of, I'm not sure how complex that kind of stuff is. You know, an offline single player version of Diablo 4 could be really insane. For the same reasons I said with Redfall. Give us options. If, you know, let's say they end up messing up an update for Red, not Redfall, for Diablo 4 in the live service thing. Maybe someone can do mods. And I can play a modded single player offline version of the game. And play that game, or that version of Diablo 4 until Diablo 4, the live service game, gets back into a better position that where I feel like playing the live service version of it again. You know, that's the thing. Because I, I... Let me put it this way. StarCraft 2... If, let's just say, you only had a live service aspect to the game and you didn't have mods, I would not have played StarCraft 2 as much as I did. The mod support for StarCraft 2 is what keeps me coming back to StarCraft 2. If you give some of your live service games offline versions of those games, I honestly think your chances of that game being successful go up tremendously because someone's going to be more willing to invest in your game and your product if they know they have an offline version of the game, especially if you got to buy to play the game. So I could go into that in more detail, but this video is already long enough. My throat's starting to hurt from uh, too much talking, I guess. So, anywho, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Oh, yeah, I should also bring it, bring this up because this will actually be kind of interesting. These are some of the franchises that I would like to personally see on Game Pass one day. Call of Duty will probably take a while because they got to wait for the Activision, not the Activision, the Sony deal to run out if the deal goes through. Crash Bandicoot, can't wait for the Crash Bandicoot games to become on Game Pass. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Um, although it just said Tony Hawk's on there, which is like Tony Hawk's what? Like Tony Hawk's Spyro? <laughs> uh, I didn't realize Tony Hawk's owned a Spyro. Anywho, so you got like Spyro the Dragon, you know, Starcraft, Diablo, you know. And it also should also take into account if the Activision Blizzard deal goes through, if you're a Starcraft fan, a Diablo fan, um, you and a Warcraft fan, you could potentially see... Uh, Diablo 1 Definitive Edition Diablo 2 Definitive Edition Diablo 3 Definitive Edition Diablo 4 will be out So they're not going to have a Diablo 4 Definitive Edition 
Starcraft 1 Definitive Edition, Starcraft 2 Definitive Edition, Warcraft 1 and 2 Definitive Edition, separate probably, and Warcraft 3 Definitive Edition, which would probably be what Warcraft 3 Reforged should have been, and probably honestly even better. So, honestly, that is why I would like to see this deal to go through personally, because the games I want to play, I expect to get a better version of it. If I didn't feel that I was going to get a better deal of this, I wouldn't even be paying attention to this, and I wouldn't care. Anywho, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. See you guys next time. Peace.